Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, before we get too far, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that helps my channel out a great deal. Uh, I appreciate that if you wouldn't mind. Um, today I'm going to do something kind of simple, but a big bold statement kind of piece. Uh, I have this thick triangle wire that I've used periodically over the years for various types of bracelets, and I'm going to make another kind that I've never made before and pair it with some pattern wire I, I picked up off of Rio Grande and uh, so we'll see how it comes out uh, I have hopes that it'll be kinda cool looking but uh, like I said I think it's gonna be a pretty easy project the only uh, limiting factor maybe there's enough metal here to where if you're using a little tiny um, butane torch or something you may not have enough heat to do this particular project so um, before we get started though I wanted to thank some people Thank you to my YouTube subscribers. I really appreciate you guys buying me coffees and all those uh, nice comments. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, my other group is my patrons over on Patreon. I appreciate all of their support and also the nice community that they've built over there where they share ideas and joke around with each other. So uh, thank you guys. I appreciate all of your support. All right, well, let's get started on this project. So, there's not much to draw up for this one, but I did still draw something up because I've, I've been doing that lately and it seems to help my overall outcome. Uh, this is my design idea book. There's three different uh, cover versions of it and it's got this nice little grid on it so it helps me to uh, keep things in proportion because I, <laughs> I'm not very good at that when I draw stuff. So, uh, if you want one of those, check it out on my merch store. It's great. It's a great uh, little book. Um, so what I'm going to use, I have this uh, thick, it's a little bit bigger than six millimeter uh, triangle wire that I've used uh, in the past for various types of bracelets. Sometimes I'll do uh, ones where I uh, section off a portion of it and put a twist in the middle. And those are nice. If you want to see a video I did about that a long time ago, I'll put a link right there for you. Uh, this one though, we're going to do something different. I'm going to flatten the ends of it and I want to I have this pattern wire that I got from uh, Rio Grande, um, not a sponsor though, uh, but I thought it would be fun to have little bits of this on here to give it some texture and see how that comes out looking. So I'm thinking the first step is going to be to flatten the ends on these so we get to do some therapeutic hammering uh, and then uh, we'll go about figuring this out, how to put this on. I think I'll probably put the center one on while it's um, while it's still flat and I may consider putting these ones on after I curve it because uh, it may be hard to bend this after those are on there in particular uh, in those spots because you have to get the bend a little bit steeper there so we'll see um, so first off let me make sure I have these ends filed nice and then we'll um, get out the little bench block and we'll do a little whacking on it with a hammer so Nothing better than whacking on something with a hammer. <laughs> All right, I think that's really flat enough. Bring this over here. I'm going to try doing this. I think I might mark off the amount that I want flattened out so that I get it pretty consistent on both sides. Let's figure out how far in we want that to go. Where are you, my little ruler? There you are. Okay. The overall thing was, let's see, it's about... I cut it to like six and three quarters inches, but I'm trying to use the metric system more, so it's... See, there's a hundred. Somewhere around 170 to 175 uh, millimeters, 17 and a half centimeters. Um, so I'm thinking, let's uh, maybe 25 millimeters seems reasonable. That would put it about right there. So we flatten it out from there. Let's try that and see how that works. We can always stretch it out a little longer. Couldn't really go shorter once you pound it flat. 
So I don't want to screw up too bad. This is the last piece of this stuff I have. <laughs> so. I need to get some more raw materials. I'm getting low on stuff. So I was packing up a bunch of scrap to send back to get recycled. So, okay. I may get out my big hammer if this chasing hammer can't do this thick of wire, but I think it I think it will. We'll see. So one of the things that happened while I was doing that is we work hardened this pretty pretty well. So if I'm going to want to be able to bend this later, I'm going to probably have to anneal it to bring that work hardening back down. Uh, so I think let's uh, anneal it. To anneal silver, just need to kind of heat it up to the point where it's kind of that dull reddish color. And then let it cool off, and that usually softens it up pretty nicely. for a few minutes. Set this back here to cool off the rest of the way. And while that's doing that, let's take a look at this stuff. Um, I need these pieces to be folded down over the top on both sides, but I'm not going to wrap it all the way around. I just want it to be on the top two sides. Um, and since we got about uh, a little more than six millimeters on each side, I'm going I'm to do it extra long just to be safe. Uh, let's go like uh, I'm gonna go like 16 millimeters in. About right there. Actually I should be doing this on the other side. Okay, about 16, so 8 would be the center, really. I think what I want to do is I'm going to use my saw to get this cut started and then I'll use my file to widen it a little bit so I can bend it down um, or I may be able to do it just with my file we'll have to see welcome to my messy sawing area I think I'll probably be able to do this with a bastard file though just get it started with the corner there same way down here if I Now, I should be able to bend this downwards. Let's see how that works. I'm 
Seems cool down enough to handle now. So I want that to fit nicely against that, so I need to go a little bit further. That's pretty good actually, so I'm going to cut this off at the purple line here. So my next step I think is to find the center of this. And let's solder this middle one on. And so I have to use this longer ruler. It's probably not as precise, but you know what? I gotta get these ends neatened up too first. So I'm gonna file those first so we have a good flat starting point on both sides. That seems reasonably good. Okay, let's start with so if we put this like that, be about right. What if we bent this just slightly like this? Raised up. Why does this guy? It's pretty close to one centimeter. So if I go I just want it to be pretty close. It's a lot right there. That would be good. So let's do that and see how that goes. I think I can probably just pick solder a little bit in there. But let's cut some solder. I'm going to use quite a bit of solder on this one. I want to not touch it to the top of the pattern wire though because it will flow into the pattern and then I won't have a pattern anymore. Nobody wants that. If you've never seen pick soldering before, I'll put a link to uh, a video up there. It's a really useful skill. It allows you to pick up solder and put it pretty much where you want it to be, in the amount you want it. let that cool a bit. In the meantime, I can make a couple more of those things, so that, that's what I'm going to do while it's cooling. I'll be right back. Okay, that's cooled off. Now I need to file this down, so I'm going to spend a little time filing this flush with the bottom. Okay, so I got it filed flush with the bottom there. I think uh, as sharp as this is, I'm going to have to file these kind of at a downward angle like that, but so it's not dangerous. 
You don't want your customers to damage their arms when they wear your jewelry. Okay, I'm going to start bending this a little bit. And a lot of times, I used to always use the outside of these to start them. You can kind of get a nice curve going. There comes a point where you can't get it any further. So then you're going to have to either manually shape it, or if you have a bracelet mandrel, that's kind of handy. I happen to have one. A lot of people use a baseball bat as a uh, bracelet mandrel, uh, like an aluminum baseball bat, because it's got a nice taper to it, so that would work just fine. Right, so I'm going to try and get these to lay down a little bit more down here. in just a little bit more. So I want these ones that I cut here to go right at the top of that, but now we got a significant curve going on, so that may be problematic. Hmm. I'll have to see whether that whether that works or not. That one fits on pretty nicely. I think this one just needs to be widened a little bit, maybe. Either way, I'm going to try and position it right. Uh... Hmm. Do I not have any whole magnesium block anymore? Maybe not. <laughs> so, let's see. I have to figure out a way to get this where it sits nice. Why don't I just do it like that? That makes the most sense to me. Let me find a third hand. Just set it like that. And we'll pick solder like we did before. I think we got that one. Again, like I said, this is probably not a project if you have a very small torch, uh, because it requires quite a bit of heat to get this big chunk of metal up to temperature. I'll weigh it when we're done and we can see how much it weighs. It's probably about an ounce at least, maybe more.
So I'm going to let that cool, and then I'm going to file the uh, bottoms of those other two. And then I'm just going to pickle it, and I'll bring it back and show you what it looks like. So uh, stay tuned. So I got it all polished up. I think it came out pretty nice. It's kind of what I had in mind. So I'm particularly pleased with how these ends taper down. I think they came out nice. So, um, oh, I was going to weigh this. It's a little over 1.036 uh, troy ounces. So, so yeah, I'll take some better pictures and put them at the end. Okay, well that was the Big Bull Triangle Bracelet. I hope you enjoyed that one. Make sure to hit the like button if you did. Uh, that really helps out my channel. Um, you should also maybe check out some of the other videos I have here. Um, I have over 250 videos, so it's a pretty um, significant resource of ideas and techniques, uh, especially if you're a beginner and want to learn some of these things. So uh, check it out, watch a few more, subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. So. Something else you might want to check out uh, is the video description down below because there are some relevant links on there. Uh, if you want to become a supporter of the channel, uh, you can go to my merch store, get yourself one of those nice design idea books or a coffee mug or a number of other things there. Uh, there's the buy me a coffee link in there if you feel like giving me a tip to help me with supplies. Um, there's a link to my website if you'd like to see some of my jewelry for sale. The holidays are coming up, so if you need to get a gift for somebody, that'd be great. And then there's my Patreon. So uh, if you are tired of YouTube's ads or if you just want to uh, check out some of my different tiers over there, check it out. All right, thanks for coming by. Take care. Happy silversmithing.